we've all experienced the increase in prices at the grocery store. So how does that impact our local food banks? Joining us this morning in studio is Michael Iberis, the executive director of the Second Harvest Food Bank. Michael, good morning. Good morning, Melina. Thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure to be here with you. Yes, right after Easter. Hope you had right. a great Easter. But let's just dive right into it. What are you seeing now at the food bank? Well, we're seeing uh, inflation, yeah. uh, obviously, and disruption uh, of the uh, food chain. Um, a, um, a local uh, grocer said it well. He said uh, during a meeting a few, a few weeks ago, he said that last year, maybe 14 months ago, mm -hmm. a load of olives, the cost of transporting it from California to the Mahoning Valley was $9,000. Okay. Currently, it's $23,000. Wow. What a jump. It is a jump. Yeah. So... 14, 000, what happens to that $14,000? What ends up in the price of the product that you're going to see on the grocery shelf? At the food banks, that's not the case because a hungry person gets food at no cost right. when they go to an agency. So we have to eat that. Yeah. For, and so we have to find a way to raise more money to find other ways of, of getting food or of, of, of covering that cost. So it's a difficult situation, but inflation is definitely hitting the food banks. We in the, in the state of Ohio, there are 12 Feeding America food banks, 11 counterparts to us, and we're all in the same boat. Yeah. We're all about 30% down in the amount of food that we have now as opposed to last year. So there is a struggle in, on the food bank uh, uh, area. So you, you mentioned having to pivot and find solutions. Have you found anything that that has been working for you guys or are we still in that area of trying to figure out how to make this work with inflation? Well, we are trying to figure out how to make it work yeah. with inflation. It's difficult. Yeah. We're working a little bit harder. We have six loads that were supposed to come in the first quarter that haven't come in yet. They're still lost in space out there somewhere. Uh, so that then we'll get into the supply chain because that's what that is. Uh, there's product that is not is not available. Mm -hmm. We place an order for for various uh, foods, and the uh, wholesaler uh, or the supplier says, "Well, we don't have that many. You're going to have to wait until we get more more product in." And the grocers are having the same way. The retailers are having the same issue. Uh, so food banks are experiencing, without question, inflation. Uh, however. Uh, uh, people that are coming to our pantries are going to continue to see food at no cost to them and we're going to continue to work as hard as we can to, to mitigate the situation. Now has the demand for food spiked again since you know? Un unfortunately it has. Yeah. Guess where? With senior citizens. Wow. Many see, uh, just visualize this. This is a senior citizen maybe that retired 20 years ago. Right. They have social security, maybe a pension, maybe not a pension. And they're going to the grocery store and they're seeing that significant increase in, in costs of food. What do they do? <laughs> so many of them are coming to a food, a food pantry. And so our pantries, 160 strong in Columbiana, Mahoning, and Trumbull County, are welcoming them, welcoming them and they're, they're helping them as best as they can. And we're going to continue to do that. Our, our staff and our volunteers are going to continue to work very, very hard to make sure that people in the Mahoning Valley that need food are going to get food. And we can't forget about our summer months. We're heading right into that, those kids at home. I know you guys see a huge spike during the summer where kids, they're not in school and they need food. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And this is going to be difficult, but we'll keep you posted. Yeah. So tell us, how can we help those who are fortunate enough? We're all feeling it, but if you have a little extra, what can we do to help you guys give back? Well, obviously funds yeah. uh, are, are number one because that helps us to uh, purchase food that we need as well as cover these transportation costs because not only have we seen a 40 percent increase in our transportation costs but now we're starting to see add-ons we're starting to see fuel adjustments mm. on, on our invoices so we're starting to see the, the pinch there so obviously our uh, the Funds are, are the number one uh, area that we, that we always need help. And we're very fortunate. The Mahoney Valley is very, very generous to us. And they want to help people in need. Everyone knows somebody that's struggling. That's right. And they can relate to that. And uh, they, they donate and they uh, support the food bank. And we appreciate that. And shout out to everyone out there that helps us. And uh, we're going to do the best we can to help with those in need. Before I let you go, give us that website so we can donate. <laughs> Well, you can just call the food bank, actually, okay. uh, at uh, 330-792-5522, um, and um, 
right now. I, I think that we'll, we'll cover all your, call, all your uh, calls. And some people have questions when they call. So calling us is probably the best the way best at this option. point. Thank you so much. Michael Iberis with Second Harvest Food Bank. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us this morning.